plans here? This is, coach was talking about this the last week. You got any plans to get away from the summer and do anything different? Uh, TBD. TBD. I got something big coming that I'm sure you guys will probably find out in the next couple of weeks. So I'll Can just. You do with the Olympics? Uh, no. Ha no. You you'll find out. So, so no. <laughs> what has this offseason been like for you? Uh, you know, you, you were going through a lot of different stuff as a rookie. Mm -hmm. Has it been just a lot more comfort for you this year? Yeah, truthfully, it's, been, it's really been night and day from last year. I feel like it's been a breath of fresh air. Um, been healthy this whole time, had a really good off-season training plan, regimen. Um, like I said, this is probably the best my body has felt uh, in an off-season. Didn't have any, you know, nicks or bruises this whole time. Um, but I, the thing that I'm most excited for and most proud about was continuing to build my rapport with, with Kyler. I think that's been just amazing to do. And we've been throwing every single weekend. K1 would text me, Mike, you here? Yeah, I'm here. Like, let's go. We've been throwing at different high schools. Um, sometimes he'll text me, you know, 8 o'clock the night before. You want to go out tomorrow at 10? And I'm like, shoot, man, <laughs> you just let me know. Um, <clears throat> stayed here pretty much every single weekend throughout this whole OTAs specifically for my just for so I could train with K1, right? I told my girlfriend, I said, I'm not coming to Portland. <laughs> like, I'm not coming to Portland during the week and I'm staying here so we can work on my relationship with Kyler. Um, but it's, it's really been amazing. I can't even articulate how it's just awesome it's been. No, there's been other guys there. Um, pretty much every receiver has been out there consistently. Um, but yeah, pretty, we've pretty much done every single weekend. Yeah, because he was saying that you he could reach out to you at 3 a.m. and you're yeah, I mean, I told him, I said, bro, I'm here for you. Like, I want to, you know, help turn this thing around and build this thing around you. And so, like, I, I'll, I'll make myself available and I'll put, you know, everything off to the side unless it's something major, you know, to prioritize my relationship with him. What specifically do you work on at the, at the practices outside of here to kind of build that chemistry? Yeah, so our offense is it's built off rhythm and timing. Um, there's not a whole bunch of feel that goes into our offense. It's off, you know, steps. It's off revolutions. When we run certain routes, it's based off X step on your outside or inside foot. And so that takes timing because his drop is predicated on our steps and our routes. And so I think last year we got, we didn't have enough time throughout the off season to work on that, that timing, that chemistry. Um, but now like it's been, I feel like it's been as seamless and as flawless of OTAs as I could have hoped, you know, for. I think there's been less than three balls on the ground between me and him this whole time. And you attribute um, all that extra work translating out here on the field. Yeah. Well, right? oh, I mean, most of it comes from out here because we, we're here, you know, four or five days a week yeah. training here, and we get most of the grunt of the work here. The weekends are just to work on some of the stuff that we may have, may have missed or things we need extra work on. Yeah. With all that being said, how have you seen that rapport and that relationship with him grow? Is it tangible? Is it intangible? How would you how would describe it? I would describe it as both, honestly. Uh, tangible because now I can, he's comfortable enough and we have a good enough relationship where we can go ahead and talk to each other and say, hey, you know, what did I need to do on this? Um, and I can go back and forth and say the same thing. Hey, I, I thought that ball could have been X place here or thought it could have been placed a little bit here. Um, he said, hey, Mike, you know, I want this route run like this. Okay, boom, boom, it's done. And so tangible in that sense, intangible because there's sort of a unknown, like un you can't, I can't quantify the feel that we both have for each other. He kind of knows how I run my routes now and knows like the depth that I might come out of my route might be slightly different than Greg because my stride length as a taller guy is a little bit longer. Same holds true with Marvin. His stride is a little bit longer than mine. And so we just understand, like when I run a dig, my catch point might be at 20. Greg's might be at 18 or 19, right? Like those are subtle differences that maybe we can't objectively state, but he can sort of, we can both feel, just a feel to the position, right? From both sides. And so that's the intangible part of that. From, from, team, from a team standpoint, what's it like having him back out there this year? Like I said, I mean, I, night and day, night and day having him out there. He's definitely the, you know, the leader of the team and the one that makes this engine go. And so to have your leader out there um, makes, makes the world of a difference. How important was it where right at the end of last season, you started 
getting on the same page. And how important was that to continue this building process? Yes, it was really just objective feedback, confirming to myself and I think to Kyler that what our relationship, when it's clicking, can look like. And I think that's that's sort of the standard that I expect from myself. And I think he obviously expects that from himself too. I think we were six for six. I think I had 95 yards in the season. Like that's hopefully what I anticipate to be a game that's very frequent and regularly occurring this year. <clears throat> so much. Uh, Marvin accomplished so much in college, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, when, he, when he arrives, when you see him, I mean, what was your first impression? Do you feel like that everything that you heard about him was justified? Mm -hmm. What you saw, what you expected, better than what you expected? What did you see? He's pretty much everything I expected. He's one of those guys where oftentimes we all have a media perception, but when you meet someone in per person, it can either be way different than they portray themselves to media, maybe the exact same or maybe a little bit better. He's probably a little bit better, right? Like, he's, he was bigger than I thought when I saw him. Um, and he's just a really, really good dude. And I'm not just saying that because I'm up here or because I have to say that. Like, I genuinely am saying that because he truly is a good person. He's humble. Um, and for someone to have accomplished the things that he's accomplished, you wouldn't know that just in a regular conversation with him. And I think that's always special when someone's grounded um, and, and very humble despite having co accomplished so much because that's pretty rare to, you know, to be around. You were in his shoes last year. Um, do you see him going through the same uh, challenges, going from one one level to the next? Do you see that that progression? Uh, shoot. I mean, he was a lot more he was a lot more accomplished than I was coming into the the NFL, and just based on these couple of practices that I've been out there with him, I would anticipate him to continue um, his college production to the NFL, barring injury. And I mean, he's really hadn't had any busts in the playbook. And I think he's very perspicacious and always seeking information and very self-aware. And so with that attitude combined with having elite traits that you can't teach and a great natural feel for the, for the position, I truly think sky, sky's the limit for him. Having said that about you know, Marvin and knowing all the work that you and the rest of the wide receivers have put in with Kyler in the offseason. How do you feel about this wide receiver group as a whole getting into training camp? I think it's amazing. I think we've got a great blend between veterans, old guys, young guys. Um, but the thing that I'm most excited for and most enthused about is just the overall attitude of the receiver room. We have a bunch of guys who truly are team first guys, and we don't have a bad, like a bad guy in the room. And whatever role that we earn and we carve out for ourselves, I think guys are going to be comfortable in that role and have the ego of that role. And so I think that that's important when building a community, building an organization, is everyone understands their role and, and stays to that. How much do you think his presence, assuming that it will take that rise, like you said, how much do you think his presence will help the entire group on the field? I think his presence is going to help a lot because he's, he's one of those receivers where whatever role you give him, he – he can, I think, be the best at, in the one of the best in the league at that role. Whether it's an outside receiver um, who's going to be a guy that you go to on third down because he has the ball skills to play on third down. He can be inside receiver because I said if you play inside, you got to have good ball skills, and he has elite ball skills. Um, he's a red zone threat because not only does he, I keep coming back to ball skills, but he has great releases and great feel for the position, and he understands his leverage, DB leverage. And he has the length to go up in high point footballs. He can also be a deep threat because he can run and he's long. He's got a long stride length. Um, and he also can run option routes. He really, I mean, he truly, like, I can't, I keep, I'm raving about him because he doesn't really have a weakness in his game. And I'm, I said this, I think, with Bo at the Super Bowl. Um, if we were to get Marvin, which we ended up obviously de doing, uh, I'm impressed with him because I and I think I'm I'm so happy he's here because I have an opportunity to learn from him, and you know ego aside, even though I'm older than him, like he's accomplished a lot of things that I haven't, and so I like he had a release the other day and I'm like we were throwing this past week and I said bro how'd you do that release, and we just kind of, he was kind of showing me you know how he did it and I'm like, okay I'm gonna try and do that but that's like you know sort of a a real life example of how. I'm so open to learning from 
you know, what was the best wide receiver in college football and what I think will be one of the best receivers in the NFL. Some guys might not be uh, as willing or team first as you not feel a bit overshadowed by mm -hmm. coming aboard. Yeah. How do you keep yourself in check and say, you know, I want to get better. I want more balls. I want more yards. I want more yeah. glory. But how do you keep yourself in check? I think my mindset is whether he's here or not, it doesn't change my job description or my role. Like my role is to be as good of a player as I can be, to catch the football when it comes to me, and you know to maximize myself and become as good as I possibly can be. And whether he's here or he's not here, that doesn't change my role. So from my understanding, like nothing changes with him here. I think it just makes the team better. Um, that being said, I still have the utmost confidence in myself and just how highly I speak of Marvin. I, I think I can be in that same tier, in that category. And that's my personal goal, too, is to eventually become one of the best receivers in the NFL. And I want to go from being a good receiver last year to being a great receiver. Hey, Mike, we've had unusually hot temperatures here the last few weeks. Is it, how's it been for you? Is it, do you think it's good for you guys to be out in that heat? Is it tough to be out there? What's it like? I think it's just an opportunity. I don't think it's good or bad. I just, I mean, I, I feel like I'm used to it at this point. Because we practice in the morning, we've been able to avoid the 100 degrees. I think we've been high 90s. But I think as long as you hydrate and get enough electrolytes, like, I think, I don't, I really, truthfully, I don't really notice that, that much of a difference, honestly. Last year, whether it was you or Paris, just the rookie class as a whole last year was on the field a lot. And yeah. earned a lot of playing time. When you had a moment to reflect, were you even surprised to see how much your rookie classmates truly did make an impact? Mm, yeah. Uh, yes, because you typically don't see that, but no, no, because I know the type of guys that we have in this room or the type of guys we have in this building and the type of guys that I came in with. And I think their off the field character has allowed them to, you know, earn so many minutes on the field. Cause like I said, everyone in this building is extremely self-aware and understands their strengths and weaknesses and our team first guys. And so it doesn't surprise me that we had so many rookies playing. Did you pick up that release that Marvin was showing you when he I'm getting close. I, I'm going to use these next four weeks. And, and has, he, has he been asking you a lot of questions throughout the training camp? Uh, yes and no. I think, like I said, he's he's pretty right. dialed in. And so if there are questions, it's more, more about the footwork. But there's nothing that technique-wise, maybe a few things here or there, but he's pretty seasoned as it is. And I don't want, I never, as a veteran, I never want to impose myself on somebody and sort of place myself in that leadership role and say, and make him like try to, yeah, like I try to force myself on him. But if things come up, I think things have probably come up five or six times and I'll just send them, tell them little reminders before plays, hey, this routes off this footwork. Um, if it's like sort of a one-off or a tricky play, stuff that I missed, messed up on last year as a rookie, I'll just remind them, that, but it hasn't been too much. You had mentioned that you told your girlfriend I'm not going to make it to Portland because I'm going to build my relationship with Kyler. Right. How did you take that? She's, I mean, she's a professional athlete, so. <laughs> but she's also a girlfriend at the same time. So, <laughs> so she's, she understands as a, from the athlete side, but as a girlfriend side, you know, there's a little bit, a little bit of bite back on it. But. <laughs> have you seen a game yet? Uh, I've probably been, yeah, this is probably the most, most games I've been to, been able to go to this year uh, because they had the Gold Cup in. Los Angeles, and that's where I do my off-season training. So I saw all six of those games. I think I've been to two or three home games in Portland. So it's been it's been pretty good so far. So you earned some slack there. Right? Earned some slack, and then I'm I'm gonna go spend some time with her after this OTAs too. So. Uh, you, you, Tyler, and the guys are gonna get together in this uh, break period. Before we're yeah, we're planning to. Okay. We don't have details yet, but sure. we're definitely planning to. Mike, JG said the key for some guys to make that jump is for the things to slow down. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed, is it too early to tell if this game is slowed down for you? Or? Absolutely. I, I can say that with the utmost, utmost confidence that the game 100% is slowed down because I feel like I, I know the offense so much better now. Um, <clears throat> last year, the concepts were a little bit new. The play calling was a little bit new. I didn't really understand. Uh, Drew Petzing's vision as a play caller, but now having been in that offense for a year, being under the scheme for a year, hearing the verbiage of the plays for a year, like everything is slowed down because my, my mind's not spinning. I'm just focused on one thing at a time and not, what, what's my split? What, is, what do I have on this route? Like as soon as they call the play, boom, I know exactly what to do. So in that sense, the game is slowed down. And then also to just being more confident in myself and my ability 
and having more trust with Kyler where I know where the ball is going to be has been huge.